Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click that notification bell. Today we're going to do a fun technique I call the scribble, spritz, and emboss. We're going to use some embossing folders from Altenew. We're going to use Altenew's Hostas, Playful Circles, Daisy Bed, Perfect Poinsettias, and Layered Snowflakes. We're also going to use Altenew's Watercolor Brush Markers. We're going to use markers from all the sets. And I just store mine. They come in a great little box, but I store mine in mugs. These are sentimental mugs. I like them. They look very decorative sitting up on my shelf. I do clip off part of the packaging so I know the name of the set and what colors go in that set. So we're going to begin with the Hostas embossing folder. And you're going to want to use the indented side. And so for Altenew, that's the side that has the label on the front of it. It's going to have Altenew and then the name of the embossing folder. So that's going to be the side we're going to use. You can feel that those little images are indented. And then we're going to take the pigment from the watercolor brush markers and we're just going to scribble it over our image. So I'm using the Just Green from the Autumn Festival set. And then I'm also using Sweet Leaf and Lime from the Tropical Fiesta watercolor brush marker set and you just scribble it on there. So this is a large image so it's going to take a lot of pigment and um, there's no right or wrong. You're just scribbling your colors. These greens are all going to blend very well together. They're not going to create mud which you do have to be careful if you're using colors that don't blend well together. And um, I'm going to cover the whole image <clears throat> with the pigment or most of the image. So the more pigment you use, the more coverage you will get. This takes a little bit exper of experimenting to figure out what you like. Once the pigment's laid down, you're going to take a fine, the fine mister and also a A2 size of watercolor cardstock. This is the loose leaves from Altenew. And going to spray it and then I'm spraying a lot of water on the pigment here because I really want this green to move. I want these leaves to be completely covered so I put a ton of water to get tons of movement. Going to grab my Platinum 6. I'm going to follow the sandwich that's suggested with that and going to run it through the machine. Now you're going to want to have something handy to clean it up because this is a very messy technique. You can see the pigment oozing out there and it's oozed out onto my die cut machine. No worries. Just take, I use baby wipes. You could also use just a wet cloth and you're just going to clean up your machine. Make sure you get all the cracks and crevices. It does not always ooze out, but I always have something wet right by my die cut machine so I can wipe everything down. So I'm just wiping it down really well, wiping down my surface. I'm going to wipe down my platform, my plates, and a baby wipe does a great job. Or a wet microfiber cloth would work too. So I'm going to wipe everything down. And I just very carefully, after I remove my um, panel, which I should have done first, and it doesn't matter, but I usually remove the panel first and then set it aside. Remove it very carefully and just use a dry microfiber cloth to or a paper towel to dab up those little pools of pigment there that happened around the edges. That happens. That just is part of the process here. And then I just take my um, embossing folder very carefully to the sink in our bathroom next door to my stamp room and I just rinse them with cold water, put it in a drying rack. I do rinse my sink afterwards. So next I grab the, grab the Playful Circles embossing folder and I'm using the Ultramarine and the Ultraviolet from the Autumn Festival um, water color brush marker set. And um, going to scribble those in. Make sure I get it in most of those little dots. There is a lot of them. So just squeezing and scribbling that pigment in there. Going to again spray it with some water. This one I don't spray quite as heavily as I sprayed the Hosta. 
lay my cardstock panel in there and then I'm going to carefully take it over to my die cut machine and run it through. And then again, wipe everything down. So this one, I had a lot of ink and pigment pool up at the tops. I'm going to cut most of that off and that does happen. Um, you could redo the panel. You could cut down the panel even more than I do. You'll see that here in a minute when we start finishing those cards. For the daisy bed, I'm only using two markers again, and I'm using the Rouge from Winter Wonderland and Warm Sunshine from Spring Garden. And I'm using the Warm Sunshine in the centers of my daisies, and then I'm using the Rouge in for the flower petals. These two blend beautifully together if they mix. So you can do just like florals. Alternate has a ton of embossing folders that have beautiful flowers on them and you can totally color the stems and put the pigment down over your flower image too. You just wanna make sure that the colors you're putting next to each other do not turn to mud because there is a lot of movement with this technique. I've done it on a lot of cards. It looks great. Just always be thinking about what colors don't work well together. A color will can help you with that. Um, so just have one on hand or look online for a color will and see which colors are next to each other and mix well when which colors may not. And I have thrown panels away because ooh, that created just a little bit too much mud because you can't control the pigment. Once it's down, it is going to ooze and smush and move wherever it wants to. So next we're going to do the layered snowflakes. I'm going to use two blues. I'm using the sea breeze from Spring Garden and the turquoise from the Tropical Fiesta set. <clears throat> uh, and I'm mainly using the sea breeze, just adding just a tiny bit of turquoise for a little variation. One of the um, sets has a metallic silver marker in it that I thought would be really fun to try with this set or try with the blue as well. So that is on my list of let's give that a try. I think that would make a great snowflake card. So I am going to, again, miss my paper, miss my embossing folder, run it through. And you do want to think about where you're placing your panel in your folder for some of these like this one has a center open so how much of that do i want to show where do i want that to be so dabbing off the extras cleaning everything up and then we're going to reach for our last folder which is the perfect poinsettias and i'm going to use the ruby red from winter wonderland the crimson from the tr tropical fiesta <clears throat> and just again Scribbling, scribbling my two colors around. This makes a beautiful, very pink with just a little hint of reddish orange panel when we're done. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but in person, it's really pretty. And I could have finished it so many different ways. I will probably make more of these for my personal Christmas cards that I send out. So I'm running it through, bringing it back gonna again pull that panel out dab off the extra that's accumulated at the edges and set that aside to dry you do want these to dry completely because before you cut and it does take a little while i made these set them aside went and had lunch came back and finished my cards so i'm going to take all five of my panels here and show you the finished results and they're just going to sit aside and dry and then we're going to start putting our cards together. <clears throat> For the hostas panel, I cut it at a diagonal. I'm going to use a top folding heavyweight card base here. And I'm going to mount the embossed panel to the bottom portion of that. And then I grab some glitter cardstock and I grab the Altenews Forest Canopy Glitter paper pack and I just went through you will see me here I grab it and I just kind of went through and found some of the green glitters that looked good with the panel 
and I'm going to use Altenew's uh, Water Brush Hello. And I'm going to cut that from one of the glitters, and then I'm going to cut a strip from a lighter green. So I keep my little glitter packs in just like a DVD holder. You can get just empty ones and I just put a label on and that way I can hold all my little bits and pieces and scraps and stuff and they stack really well they keep everything nice and tidy so I do stack my hello I stack it on a couple sheet couple extra hellos that I cut from some scrap white card stock <clears throat> and for the little strip here it's very thin probably about an eighth of an inch and I just glue that right along the top of that edge of the embossing panel there put something heavy to hold that in place and then I'm, I'm going to have a sub sentiment on this card and I grabbed that from the heartfelt sentiments from Altenew I stamped it in obsidian black ink used some clear embossing powder on it heat set it I'm just kind of cutting that down to size and just going to assemble my card, cut, cut off my little extras here and figure out where I want my hello and where I want my sub sentiment to go. And something else you could do with this is you could just keep it as a hello. And I just happen to have little containers, those same empty DVD containers that I have extra sentiments in. So I do keep hello cards on hand and then sometimes I'll just grab a little sentiment that's pre-made that fits the occasion. Do I need to get well? Do I need a sympathy? Do I, you know, need a thinking of you, a hugs, whatever. I can just grab that and put that with the hello and have the card that I need. But for this one, I do need some get well card, get well soon cards. So I decided to go ahead and grab that sentiment and put it on there. I'm just using some little um, foam strips here to add a little bit of dimension to my sub sentiment. And I, it is going to overlap the E and that L just a little bit. And so I am just keep going back and forth to make sure I don't put any of those foam strips where I don't want it to be because that's, these little strips are really sticky and I didn't want to remake my sentiment. So I'm being very careful of getting those in place and I'm gonna take the backing off and I'm gonna get that wiggled into place just where I want it. And I have a cute card. Now I do add a little bit, you'll see all the finished cards at the end. I do go back and add just a little embellishment to, to some of the cards, but I really wanted the star of the cards to be these fun panels that we created with this scribble spritz and emboss technique. Excuse my head here. I was making sure that this was in place and I did not realize my head was that far in the camera. So for the playful circles panel, I did cut off most, uh, I did cut it down quite a bit. <clears throat> so you can still see up there where it pulled just a little bit, but I really don't want to cut it down any farther than that. I cut it down to three and three quarter by five inches. We're going to put that on uh, a panel of fun foam on the back and pop that up on a, P a two size piece of brushed silver cardstock. So you're going to see my head again while I get that into place. Sorry about that. And it does take me just a minute. And I realized that my, a2 panel was a little crooked, so I just trimmed that up real quick and going to get that all put into place. And then we're going to make a fun little sentiment for this. So I took the Hugs Circled Greetings from Altenew, and I'm just going to use the Hugs part. So I could have done it either way. And it looked great. I could have put that hugs in the middle of that brushed silver and popped it up over the top of that whole panel and just had that little circle part behind the hug showing. That would have been really cute too. Didn't think about that till I was doing the voiceover here. But I just brushed, um, sorry, cut that out of the brushed silver, 
cut a few extras, stacked it up, and then I took a sentiment from the Sentiment Strips 3 set, and I just used par a partial of one of their sentiments, the Sending Birthday. I think it said Sending Birthday Wishes or something, and I just used some Post-it tape to cover up the word I did not want in that sentiment and inked it up, pulled that piece of tape off and stamped it. I, You could cut your um, stamp also, but I prefer to just tape it if I can before I cut. Oh, I do cut some of my stamps, but not very often. I prefer to just use the tape method. The trick is to remember to remove the tape after you've inked and before you stamp it or you end up with a big mess. So I put a lot of glue on this because it's kind of bumpy. This is a bumpy texture, really bumpy texture and I did not add any foam tape or anything. So I really wanted it to stick down. <clears throat> so, and then I just mount this whole panel on a top folding A2 heavyweight card base. And then we're gonna reach for our cute daisy bed. I love how this turns out. We end up creating a very, it's not a one layer card, but I do not have that much dimension on it. I do not add any extra dimension to the hello. Um, I do add a few little pearls at the end, but it is pretty flat, will mail pretty nicely. So at first I thought I wanted a little strip to go under this, and in the end, I don't because I end up choosing the Tiny Sentiments Hello from Altenew, and it has a strip on it. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut that from Altenew's Dazzling Diamonds Glitter cardstock. Again, it comes in one of these little packs. These little, um, their little cardstock and paper packs are cut perfectly to use with the Mini Blossom from Altenew. And the Mini Blossom is easy. It sits on my desk. I don't have to get up and walk to the other side of my craft room to use one of my bigger machines, my Gemini or my Platinum 6, and the plates last forever. So I reach for it for most of my little word and sentiment <clears throat> strip dies because it's super handy and it cuts beautifully. So I'm gonna glue this panel on and it really wanted to pop up. So I really had to like set it aside and let it really adhere so you will see me get everything ready and then just set it off to the side while, while we start to work on our layered snowflakes card. We'll come back and finish the daisy bed card in just a second, but it just needed a little bit more time to adhere. So setting that all off to the side, I'm going to grab that layered snowflake card. I do trim the layered snowflake down to four by five and a quarter. And I went back and forth. Do I want to layer it on glitter cardstock? Do I not? I went through lots of glitter cardstock that I have in my stash. And in the end, I decided just to use a piece of foam, fun foam, and mount it on an A2 card base. And then I used some silver glitter cardstock from Memory Box's Holiday Glitter Pad for my sentiment. <clears throat> but I think I'm going to go back here in just a sec and finish my daisy bed card before we get busy with the sentiment here. So, yep, I'm going to grab that. And we're just going to glue this hello directly to the card and that little strip on the hello fits perfectly underneath that angled panel so I tuck that up there really close and make sure everything is glued in place meaning that hello has a little bit of wiggle to it because it's only held to that strip by the one by the e so you want to make sure that the h and the two l's and the o are where they should be. So you see me kind of fiddle in with it there. And that card is now done and drying. I obviously I cut off the ends of that little glitter strip. So now I'm going to go through and pick my glitter card stock for 
my layered snowflake card, and I'm going to use the Biddy Buzzwords Holiday Die Set from Honeybee Stamps. And I am going to use the shadow and I'm going to use the word die. I'm going to cut the words out of the glitter card stock and <clears throat> the shadow is going to be out of some vellum. Can't see it super great here on camera, but in person, it's just a nice little soft touch to back those words. So here I am just, I'm cutting this down to fit in my mini blossom. And then I'm gonna run my little words through. I do not stack up my Merry Christmas. I just end up cutting it and gluing it directly to that vellum. I just wasn't sure that it needed that extra dimension, but it would look cute either way. So I'm running this back and forth, getting it cut through. This is pretty thick glitter cardstock, so it did take me a couple passes to make sure that it was cut. And these are pretty intricate little word dies. So sometimes those are hard to get all those little cuts just perfect so you don't tear anything. So I just remove it very gently and I do need to remember to go back and get the little um, dot for the eye. So I have my <clears throat> Merry Christmas done. It is layered on the vellum and I'm just kind of trying to see where do I want to put it? And I end up putting it in the middle, but now that I'm watching the video, I kind of think it would have been cute to put it at that angle. Might try that when I um, try this technique with that metallic brush marker. And so I'm just putting my adhesive right behind those, the glitter letters so that I don't, you don't see any of it through that vellum. <clears throat> and that card is done for now. And for our last card, the Perfect Poinsettias, I cut this one straight across and I'm going to mount this at the top of my card base. And again, I'm just putting this directly to the card base. So I want to be careful about everything I do to finish this card so I don't have to tear everything apart and ruin a card base. I again am using the Biddy Buzzwords Holiday Die Set from Honeybee. <clears throat> I was kind of looking at different words to use. In the end, I just choose to use Merry Christmas again. And so I'm gonna glue that panel in. And like I said, it appears to be much orange, more orange than it is. It is very pink and reddish pink in person. I hope the pictures show that in my blog post and I will have pictures of all individual cards on my blog post so make sure you go check that out to see each card in more detail and close up and such so <clears throat> I'm going to cut Merry Christmas and I cut Merry Christmas out of the Dazzling Diamonds glitter cardstock from All To New I do layer the Merry Christmas up this time Make sure you keep track of all your little dots on your eyes because I did layer those too. That took a little bit of work. You could also use a teeny tiny um, pearl or drop there, but I wanted to use the glitter dot that came from the die cut itself. <clears throat> So I'm going to cut this through, layer up my Merry Christmas, and then I am also going to put just a little tiny sliver of this Dazzling Diamonds cardstock underneath that, right underneath the edge of that panel as well. So I'm going to cut that, and this one's probably just a little bit wider than an eighth of an inch. It Somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch there. I just did it by eye. Whatever I thought, I just thought it needed just a little bit wider of a strip. So I'm gonna glue that into place. And when that dries, I'll cut off the edges 
and we're going to stamp a little sub sentiment and we're going to stamp this directly onto that white portion of that card base. So the tricky part is, is I want to make sure I stamp it right the first time. So I am going to use my Misty. You'll see me get that out here in just a minute. I'm just popping out very carefully all of my, my word dies there. <clears throat> I think this is the point where I decide I need to layer it. So I did layer it. They're layered here. I'm just putting this into place to see where I want that sub sentiment to go. It is just a sentiment strip that says from our family to yours. And I grab that from the honeybee stamps inside holiday sentiment stamp set. And I figured out where I want it. So I'm going to get that in the middle there and then I'm going to close my misty. The misty has grid marks on it and I use those little grid marks to make sure these little straight sentiment strips are all straight nice and even so you can misty has uh, there's also things that go with your misty that can help you make sure that the, your stamps are straight they have little acetate grid sheets and such, but I tend to just use the grid marks on the top of the misty when I can. So <clears throat> I stamped this in obsidian black ink from Altenew. That is a pigment ink, so it does not dry immediately. Right here, I realize that and I do grab my heat it tool from Ranger. It is, it doesn't get too hot. It doesn't blow too hard and it's perfect for drying things without warping your cardstock or adding too much heat. But I did want to make sure that my black sentiment there was dry so I did not smear it and ruin the entire card. Although I say ruined, we can always fix any card. But I like the way this was looking. I didn't want to have to fix anything. So I'm going to glue my Mary and my Christmas on there. I do make sure I get my eye put on there as well. And put something heavy on it, let it all dry because, and you want to give this, anything that you glue to an, an image that's been ran, especially through an embossing folder, it's very textured. So it takes just a little bit more. You want to make sure it's really adhered with some pressure so that it doesn't pop up on you. So here are my finished cards. I added some little uh, little things from Lucy's cards from her Rainforest set. I used some little pearls on the Hasta card. I did not add anything to the Playful Circles card. I left it as is. I think this would be a great card for a guy. And for the Daisy bed, I just added some, again, from little things by Lucy's card, some glossy porcelain pearls, just a little sprinkling of them. On the Merry Christmas, I used some Tic Tac Jelly Hearts in white from Trinity Stamps. I just sprinkled a few of those around my Merry Christmas. And for our Perfect Poinsettias card, I just added just a few uh, iridescent drops from Pink Fresh Studio. I hope you like this technique. I hope you give this technique a try. I hope you have fun getting inky and I'll see you next time. Thanks.